Hello Preschool, it's Miss Alyssa here in Occupational Therapy. Welcome to our session for February 8th, 2021. It's good to see you today. Um, we're going to get started. I have a hand warm up, a craft, and our self-help skills. So we're going to start with bin number one. And this week you'll just need a Ziploc bag, some hand lotion, and some food coloring. So you're going to squirt the hand lotion into a Ziploc bag. Um, just a couple of applications, maybe two or three, uh, into the bag, and then you're going to add your food coloring, just one to two drops. And you might want to have a towel down for this if your little one is squirting the food coloring into the bag, just so it doesn't spill on your table. And then once the food coloring is in the lotion in the bag and the bag is sealed well, we're going to put it down flat on the table and kind of push around the lotion in the bag and we're going to practice our pre-writing shapes and letters using a multi-sensory approach. So that means we're looking at it visually, we're getting some visual sensory stimulation, watching the colors blend together. We're also getting a tactile input. So the feeling of this bag, it feels kind of like a koosh ball. It's kind of mushy and the kids really like it. Um, we're also going to work on our fine motor skills doing this because we have to isolate our index finger to draw pre-writing shapes or letters in the lotion while it's in the bag. So just to show you, I'm gonna draw a circle on the bag and you can see how it shows up. And that's a pre-writing shape. You might do a cross intersecting those two lines. I know that's a goal for a lot of little ones. And then I would suggest doing a diagonal line or a leaning line. And then once you've mastered those pre-writing shapes, you can work on letters. So I can make a letter A. Make sure you start your letters at the top. Promotes good writing habits. So this is a nice thing to have because it lasts for a very long time. You just wanna make sure that you keep it somewhere where your little one won't open it um, and spill it anywhere. So that's our warm up for this week. For our craft this week in bin number two, we're gonna make a stoplight. So it's Black History Month and we wanna celebrate in OT here today, um, Garrett Morgan. He invented the traffic light back in 1923. And what would we do without him? Because we need traffic lights. So we're gonna um, make three circles and fill them in with ripped paper. So you'll need a black sheet of construction paper, a strip of red, yellow, and green, some scissors and glue, and something small and circular to trace. So I have a seven ounce um, garbanzo bean can, but you can use even a lid to Play-Doh or therapy putty too. So we're gonna work on a few different skills with this craft. We're gonna work on folding paper. So hold your paper horizontally in front of you I call that like a TV, TV style, or if you're in Mrs. Awaki's kindergarten class, you might say you're going to fold this hot dog style. So the paper is long and skinny when you fold it versus hamburger style, which is short and fat. So we're going to do that hot dog style. We're going to bring the corners of our paper up from the bottom to match up the corners on the top. Push down to fold. Make sure you push down to make a crease. Slide your hand. Look for the line. We're gonna pick up our scissors the right way. Thumbs up in the little hole. Practice opening and closing. And we're gonna cut right on the line. So some kids might need some help keeping their thumb up when they cut. And it's always nice to give that support at the wrist instead of on top of the hand. That allows them to practice opening and closing the scissors. And your support at the wrist is keeping their thumb from turning in so they don't turn their thumb down to cut. So just hold them back here and let your child open and close to cut the paper. We have two of these, we only need one. We'll save one for another week. And then, oh, you'll need a white crayon. If you don't have a white crayon, I think markers show up pretty well on black paper. 
So we're gonna make three circles vertically. And this is great because we work on that bilateral integration and using a stabilizing hand when we're tracing an object. And you're, you might have to help with spacing on this one. And if it was hard for your um, child to trace the circle, you can draw the circle and have them trace over the circle, maybe with a different color. So we got some practice making our circles with a definite beginning and end point. Next, you'll need, you need glue. And we're gonna practice ripping. So reciprocal movement, rip, rip. You can use any kind of red scrap paper. It doesn't have to be a perfect strip. We're gonna put on glue. Push down. And some kids have trouble picking up small pieces of paper. So you can hand them uh, the paper vertically. So suspend it vertically and have them reach up for it with their pincher fingers so that they are practicing using the radial side of their hand. The other way that you can challenge your child um, if they're having difficulty with hand preference is to force them to reach across midline to get the paper from you. So if you're sitting over here, keep a hand gently on their left hand and hold the paper up so they have to reach over with their right hand to get the paper and vice versa. Oops, reaching across with the left hand. Reaching, anything that requires reaching across the midline encourages hand preference. We're gonna put on our red traffic light. And then we'll do yellow. So we're working on our colors this week. Red means stop. Yellow means slow down. do our green light. And I'm running out of glue. I'm going to rip. Maybe little pieces, big pieces, as long as we're getting some practice ripping. That is very important for mastering fasteners. I think I go through one glue stick a week. I mean, even more than one glue stick. And we have our traffic light project. This one turned out a little bit better. So you guys will have fun with that next week. We're all done with our craft. And we're gonna move on to bin number three. Buttons, put the garment down in front of you. Pick up the button, look for the hole, peekaboo, pull it through, peekaboo, pull it through. And you guys are getting so good at this at home. Peekaboo, pull it through. Parents and kids. Parents are getting really good at teaching our kids to button. I really appreciate you guys doing all the hard work you do. We button. So once we get good at buttoning on the table, we can try it wearing the garment. Zipping. Most important thing, make sure thumbs are up. When you're holding the bottom of the zipper, I see a lot of kids turning their hands down and that really um, makes it difficult to uh, attach the zipper or insert this little key into the slot. So. I always use that analogy, put the car in the garage. Again, that reciprocal movement. It's a buzzword today. Up. Oh. I'll do it again in case you guys are practicing with this video. You can always pause it. And once you do that, practice wearing your coat and zipping it. And lastly, buttons, I mean, I'm sorry, snaps. 
I think I told you guys last time, save your bubble wrap because it's a good simulation of the snap. And we're gonna look for this little key, this little peg right here. I call this the belly button. Line it up. Push down with your thumb, listen for the pop. And this is probably one of the hardest things for preschoolers to do. And then once you're able to snap flat on the table, try snapping while you're wearing your coat or your jeans. You guys did a great job today. Thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in our live session.